All right, it's time for state number two. And you recognize this wood, anyone? Any guesses? Here's a hint. It's wood, it smells like the tree that it is. Another hint, shock resistant. Up next, it's the great commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And I'll be using a piece of wood from the green ash, Fraxinus pennsylvanica. It's the most widely distributed of the American ashes with a native range spanning the Eastern US through the entire Midwest and much of the Great Plains. But since its scientific name means of Pennsylvania, I couldn't really resist giving this one to the Keystone State. The tree grows naturally almost exclusively in bottomlands and along stream banks where it reaches an average height of around 40 to 80 feet tall and up to 150 feet with a trunk diameter of 24 inches. Its leaves are oppositely arranged and pinnately compound with seven to nine leaflets it's easy to miss flowers come in in the late spring along with the new growth leaves and its fruit consists of a long thin samara containing a single seed. Unfortunately, you can't really talk ash trees without mentioning the emerald ash borer, a little green beetle that feeds on ash trees. It's native to Northeastern Asia, where it's usually found at low densities and doesn't cause significant damage to the trees there. It was first identified in the US in Michigan in 2002, but may have been here since the late 80s, where it's suspected it made its way via shipping materials like packing crates. Sadly, our ash trees have no natural resistance and we lack the predators that help keep populations in check in the beetle's native range. Range, so it has become wildly invasive and highly destructive. Pretty much every state east of the Rockies has reported emerald ash borer infestation, and unaffected areas are doing their best at keeping the pest away by preventing firewood from crossing state lines. But experts agree quarantine is a stopgap at best, and the emerald ash borer infestation threatens the entire North American ash population. Treatment like insecticides have proven unfeasible for large forests, and the Department of Agriculture is looking to biological control like parasitic wasps and fungal pathogens that attack the beetle and no other species, but their effectiveness remains to be seen. And all of this is, of course, distressing. The green ash and other American ashes are remarkable trees. The green ash in particular is one of the most widely planted ornamental trees throughout the US and much of Canada. It was brought into cities as an attractive shade tree that lived a long time, 180 to 300 years or more, that was reliably disease resistant and matured into a naturally graceful form that could easily tolerate harsh urban conditions. Within its natural range, the green ash is also considered a keystone species for many types of wildlife, perhaps most prominently frogs. Green ash leaves are low in tannins, so when they fall from the tree and land in puddles and lakes, they become a crucial food source for tadpoles. Sadly, the species that have overtaken the areas where the emerald ash borer has killed off the green ash, primarily red maple, their leaves are higher in tannins and thus less suitable, which has resulted in small frog sizes and poorer survival rates. Lastly, ash trees are also prized for their wood, particularly its shock resistance and versatility. One of the things I love so much about learning about different types of trees and the wood that they produce is just how wildly different each species can be. The wood looks super different. The properties are way different. And I like kind of thinking about just the slow discovery of this type of wood that came from this tree is really good at these jobs and really bad at these jobs. Ashwood is a prime example of that. It's not very rot resistant. So pretty quickly, they probably saw this wood doesn't just do well out in the elements. But the thing that is fun to think about is how people started to figure out, you know, this wood, it's hard and strong, but it doesn't split and explode if I start hammering something with it. So while I talk about ash wood and its importance, let's throw this on the lathe and I'm gonna turn this into a little mallet. Ash wood has a long history of use throughout the world. As far as the green ash goes, traditional uses among the indigenous people within the tree's range include making bows, arrows, drums, tools, and more. Green ash wood is virtually identical to that of the white ash and other prominent ash species. And here in the US, green and white ash are sold interchangeably. Again, it's a wood that's really prized for its shock resistance, and it's used often to make tool handles of all types and sizes, particularly hammers and shovels. These properties have also seen ash would help us play many of our favorite sports. Ash became the preferred wood for hockey sticks in the 1920s. It was the favored baseball bat wood for many years, with players pointing to its large sweet spot as the ash bat's big advantage. Although in recent years, maple has supplanted ash in popularity due to its hardness and ability to sock those dingers. All right, little ash mallet, all done. Pretty happy with how this turned out. The head was meant to be quite a bit larger, but I screwed up and that is what it is. You can feel just how much the wood is absorbing each hit. You know, I'm, I'm hitting this pretty hard and I'm not feeling it here in the handle. It's really awesome. Some species of wood, you'd split that right down the middle as soon as you gave it a good whack. 
Others would kind of vibrate my hand and it, it hurt to, to give this a good whack. I can also take a much softer species like the Sitka spruce and just like crush in one of the corners of it. Doesn't even leave much of a dent in this. That hurt my ears. So yeah, ash, it's good wood. The piece of wood for our state here comes from ash heartwood, which you much more rarely see in woodworking applications. Woodworkers and consumers typically prefer the pale even color and straight grain of the ashes sapwood, which is popular for furniture and flooring as it's easy to stain, giving you a lot of options. But I really like how this heartwood offers a lot of interesting color variation for our green ash Pennsylvania. The green ash is a great tree, really underrated. Not one many people think about when they list off favorite trees, but I think it deserves to be right up there. And it's nice to have a piece of it on the map as a reminder of the fragileness of our ecosystems and how much they need our help and attention. Two states down, 48 to go, so make sure to subscribe to watch this map come together and go check out some of my other videos. And of course, sound off in the comments and let me know what state and or tree you'd like to see next.